Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about a new comic that came out called Web of Venom, Cult of Carnage. Uh, so yes, this is going to be kind of a Carnage episode, although he kind of barely shows up in it. Uh, it's more of a John Jameson episode, and if anything, and a Misty Knight episode, uh, which is cool that they brought those characters in. Uh, this is written by Frank Thierry, and the art is by Danilo S. Beirut, uh, who I think we've mentioned before on the show, has drawn a couple things. Uh, but Frank Thierry, he's a pretty good writer. Um, you know, that's why I wanted to pick this up. I was like, all right, I know it's part of Donnie Cates' story, but it is by a different writer, and it stars John Jameson. So I was curious. I was like, you know what? I I'm curious. I'll, I'll pick it up and uh, talk about it on the show. Uh, but before we get into it, in case you don't want any spoilers, I'll give one of you a chance to have this comic yourself. Boom, right there. There's the digital code. Go to that website, put that code in, and you'll get a free digital copy of Cult of Carnage, courtesy of Marvel Comics, but also Legacy Comics, which is where I picked this issue up at. So big shout out to Legacy Comics. Thank you guys so much for having this issue for me and tell me about it so that I could pick it up and share it with my audience today. I really appreciate that. Um, and if you're in the LA area or Glendale area, definitely check out Legacy Comics. They are super awesome. I'll put a link to them down below. All right, so now, Cult of Carnage. So this book, I, at first, I was like, all right, it's part of the Donny Cates thing. I'm not sure I want to dive too much more into this. I want to wait for the trades to come out. But when I saw that they announced one coming up, I think maybe written by Colin Bunn, where Andy comes back, which is Mania uh, from the Flash Thompson run, I was like, you know, that's pretty cool that they're doing that and that Donny Cates is letting these other writers write these little one-shots. And I said, maybe I'll at least get those because I don't know how they're going to trade them. Uh, my, my goal from here on out is to just buy the Venom issues that tie into War of Realms. And then after that, only go to trade. So I don't know how they're going to trade all these one shots uh, right now. So in case, you know, so I don't miss out on a one or have to buy a whole trade for a single issue. I figured I'd go ahead and pick up this one and the Andy one when that comes out. So, uh, so yeah, that's why we're picking this up today and talking about it. Because I know some of you guys, you know, know that I'm, I'm not really feeling this run too much. And this book even, I'm not feeling too much either. Uh, but I like that John Jameson is involved and I have a theory about how he'll be further involved. And before we begin, I just want to say we might talk about spoilers, so if you don't want any, I would say leave now and come back after you read the issue yourself. Uh, I would say it's worth a read, definitely, uh, but we might talk about, we're going to talk about some stuff that happened in the book, so chance our spoilers are ahead. So, you know, tread carefully, I guess. Uh, but when we start the book off, we're heading to uh, Doverton, Colorado, which is actually from Carnage USA, which we talked about recently in a recent Carnage episode, maybe a couple months ago. And, uh, and that one was when Carnage came into town, took over this whole town, took over like the share that was there uh, I think his name was Will or something like that he shows up in this book and then he also took the Avengers showed up it was when Spider-Man was part of the new Avengers Iron Man was there and they showed up and then Carnage took them over and you know used them to fight back uh, and try to fight Spider-Man and kill Spider-Man using Captain America you know possessed with a Carnage suit and same with you know Wolverine and stuff so it was, it was a pretty neat storyline it was pretty gruesome and then you had um, you know characters showing up that were like you know for, uh, had the former symbiotes you know like uh, Lasher and those guys and they were like a special ops team and they came in to help take down carnage so this town has a history with carnage so i kind of like that they went back here i'm sure it was like a donny cates and probably the right uh, the editor uh, devin lewis probably kind of want you know their ideas brainstorming stuff and working with frank thierry i don't know who exactly you know picked like hey we want to tell a story set in that setting uh, but whoever did you know did come up with that idea i actually like that idea i think it was cool to revisit this little town and see what it's like now after uh, the carnage situation but there are some inconsistencies here and i don't know if that was something that maybe i'm misreading or if it's something overlooked by the editor or writing team. Uh, but there were some issues here, so we'll get into that real quick. Uh, we have Misty Knight, who's coming into Doverton. I like her character a lot. If you've seen, like, you know, the Daredevil and the Netflix Marvel shows, uh, you've seen her. She's got a robotic arm, and she shows up on uh, Luke Cage uh, a lot. And so uh, she's really great, and she was in the Defender show, I think, too. So she's kind of a special agent, and she doesn't really reveal fully who she's working for, but her and John Jameson were tasked to do something and John Jameson came into town two days ahead of her uh, to look into this Doverton situation and John Jameson as you guys know is an agent he worked in the Carnage uh, series that we're going to talk about you know closer to the sequel when the movie comes out um, you know he, he worked in that he was like a government agent trying to track down Carnage then he also was you know part of uh, Ravencroft uh, back when Ashley Kafka and everyone was working at Ravencroft and he was head of security there for a while so he has a long history connection to uh, Carnage and so it's nice that they used him in the storyline. He also has a possession of an amulet kind of that turns him into the man wolf uh, who is a character I know uh, at least one person on Twitter who follows me who's a big big man wolf fan. So if you're out there and you're watching this I would say pick up this book because you'll get not you'll get a little bit of man wolf in here uh, but it's mostly John Jameson stuff. 
And so anyway, Misty Knight shows up, she finds John, he's under like a crater, um, and, uh, you know, a bunch of wood, like wood, like, you know, crashed building and stuff and, you know, debris. And uh, she finds him, he's naked, and he's just muttering over and over, God is coming, God is coming. And she snaps him out of it, or, you know, or I, I don't think she did, I have a theory here, uh, but she snaps him out of it, and he's like, why am I naked, who am I? And she gives him like this little history of who he is. And the only thing I don't like about this is that she's way too cutesy with the answer like typically if you find someone who's got amnesia unless you're spider-man you know i guess um or i don't know maybe misty uh, maybe in recent years has more of this type of sense of humor but i just felt like the way she delivered this i'm like she's an agent i feel like she would be more direct than this uh but she says like uh, you're john jameson son of jay jonah get my pics of the wall crawling menace jameson and i'm just like all right i, I mean it's cutesy but I, you know would you say that to somebody and again i know it's a fictional world it's you're not always supposed to put like yourself in that situation and go would i say this to somebody but it is somebody with who doesn't remember who they are they're your partner they're you know your agents together would you really word it that way and i kind of i'm not feeling the way she kind of words the explanation of who john is and to further that point uh, she also says like you were you played space cowboy that's literally her line of dialogue you also played Space Cowboy for a bit, and that's where you found a godstone that turns you into Man Wolf. Uh, from American Werewolf in Space, eventually you ended up being the head of security at Ravencroft. So again, like these little one-liner joke things that she's, you know, it, it seems weird to me that she would be like this, you know, to, to John when he's like un not understanding who he is and where he is. Because also when you say to someone like you played Space Cowboy, someone who doesn't really understand what's going on and stuff, Space cowboy can mean a number of things. Why didn't she just say you were an astronaut and uh, and you and while you were an astronaut you found the this stone that turned you into a werewolf, um, you know, or something like that. And you know, or why doesn't she ask him any questions? You know, like little things. You know, that's usually kind of the response here that you would have to somebody who's like waking up disoriented and stuff. Uh, so I don't know. It just so that I mean, it's a nitpick maybe to some of you. But for me, for pacing wise, I was kind of like, uh, this really, I was into where they were going with this. And then this pumped the brakes for me in a, in a bad way. Um, and then the next page, even more so, she says, you're in Doverton. Uh, a few months ago, Cletus Cassidy planted his psychotic flag here and took over the town. A few months ago. So according to this, Carnage USA happened just a few months ago. And I know, I get it, like, you know, comics have to happen in like compressed time and everything. But a few months, I mean, that's saying that like all the new Avengers stuff and, you know, Spider-Man being part of that and Civil War and everything, like all that happened in Siege and, and Fear Itself and like every event, X-Men vs. Avengers, all that happened in a matter of months. Uh, it just seems beyond absurd. I, I think it, it would have been better if you would have said even just a year ago. She's like, a year ago it happened, because that's still absurd, um, you know, amount of stuff to happen in a time. But uh, the reason why I say a year ago is because there's another line that comes up that contradicts this line and makes this line make even less sense. So she says here, a few months ago, Cletus Cassidy took over, and then uh, later on, it cuts back to two days earlier when John Jameson showed up to town first. And I'm sorry, it wasn't Will, wasn't the sheriff's name. His name was Eric. Uh, so I think I called him Will earlier. Uh, so Eric is here, and Eric was the sheriff of the town when Carnage USA happened. Now he's not. Uh, so his life completely changed. Obviously, he lost his daughter, too. So he takes John Jameson to the cemetery, and all the bodies have been dug up, except his daughter's because he reburied her. And he says, like, you know, um, this is the anniversary of, uh, of Carnage coming to my town. And it's like, what anniversary? It's the four-month anniversary? Like, why would you even mention the word anniversary uh, four months later? Uh, to me, that seems like something like, oh, it's the anniversary. That means, again, that it might have happened a year ago. So these are like little mistakes that the editor should have caught, I think, uh, with the dialogue. Because if someone says, oh, a few months ago this happened, and then they go, well, you know, this was the uh, the anniversary of the incident of Carnage, it's like, well, then that implies, at least to me, a one-year anniversary. So I felt like that, you know, again, maybe nitpicking the sum, but just little things that the editor should have noticed and picked up on. And just to point it out, it says here, helps keep my mind off this being the anniversary of when Carnage came to town and murdered my daughter. So he does mention it pretty early on. I mean, literally, these are like two page, like one page apart. It happens right here where they mention the four months and then the very next page says anniversary. And again, I doubt it's a four month anniversary because you would literally you would clarify that. You would say, oh, it's the four month anniversary, uh, you know, if you're pointing out an anniversary that short. So to me, usually when you say it's an anniversary, maybe it happened a year ago or two years ago. Uh, and he brings, you know, uh, John Jameson to these graves of people that either died the day Carnage came here uh, to the town or they died since then. 
um, and they all been dug up and their spines have been ripped out. So apparently that's how Carnage is going to get those codexes back from all the people he, you know, possessed at one point or all the uh, all the symbiotes that ever touched anybody and again remember in uh what was it the uh, the the venom uh mini series it was like a symbiote uh, separation anxiety where the symbiote was bouncing around the united states heading to find uh you know eddie brock who was put in another facility and it bonded with people briefly so if they're going to this detail to uh pull the spines out of these people Hopefully they mention those guys as well, just to show that, you know, hey, we're paying attention, we're reading comic books. Uh, but, you know, again, like, I like the idea of this. I think it's it's great to return to this town. Adds, like, a very horror vibe to it, which I really like. There's a church that has sprung up, and the church is run by Screech, uh, or Shriek, I'm sorry, Screech, <laughs> Screech from Save by the Bell. Uh, Shriek uh, is the one running this church. And she's, uh, you know, leading this cult, and she brings all the people that have that were once infected, who haven't had their spines ripped out, who are still alive, brings them all into the church, and you know, uh, proceeds to kill them there, along with Doppelganger, who I guess got his legs back, uh, because I thought he was ripped in half uh, in Carnage USA at least, but in this one he's got his legs back, so I don't know if they grew back or if they're the mechanical legs. Um, they don't really show it too much in the artwork, uh, but you know, anyway. So Shriek and Doppelganger, you get their cameos; they're back now, part of this. So you know, Carnage is rebuilding his family. Uh, but then, uh, you know, then you had, uh, what's his name, Eric, the sheriff, who was uh, made as a sacrifice. So when John Jameson is at his hotel room trying to think of, like, how he's going to get into this church, because when he goes and talks to Shriek, he doesn't know it's Shriek at this point. She's pretending she's like a, a lady named Miss Deal or something. Um, and so I, I get it. It's like, oh, she's making a deal with the devil. You know, if you go talk to her because you're going to this church and you get killed or whatever, it's like, whatever. I get it. It's not that clever, but I get it. Um but, uh, you know, the artwork is really good in this. So, you know, uh, Daniela does a great job on the artwork. And uh, and so they had this shot here with Eric, and he's being sacrificed, and he's screaming, like, John, help me, John. And he's got the symbol of no painted on him, and the symbol's painted on the wall, and it's all over the church and everything. And all these blind followers, these cult members, are pulling him apart. And then you see this big shrouded person who's, like, a foot taller than everyone. Um, and you have Shriek there, and then you have Doppelganger. You can tell by his eyes Doppelganger is that one there. And so Shriek makes her appearance. She uses her uh, uh, powers to take down, uh, you know, a uh, man wolf. Because at this point, John Jameson transforms into man wolf, and she says, "Ooh, man wolf. Yeah, we don't have one of those. Like our our god Null doesn't have a man wolf on his side. So what do they do? They bond with him uh, temporarily, and then uh, you know, and he says, God is coming, God is coming. And then boom, he wakes up, and that's when Misty Knight comes in and finds his body. So now she's like, All right, let's go back into the church. Let's find out what happened to you. And when they get back into the church, that's when you see that all the uh, people that were led in there have are all just sitting there dead with their spines ripped out. So it's pretty gruesome stuff, I gotta say. Um, I gave them a lot of credit for going this far into this book. And then you have, uh, they go, well, where's Eric? Like, we see everyone here, but there's no Eric. What happened to the sheriff or the former sheriff? What happened to him? Because John Jameson now feels invested. He knows the guy's story. He doesn't want anything to happen to him. But unfortunately, something very bad does happen to him. Eric was brought to wherever, you know, somewhere else, and Doppelganger rip rips his spine out. And then again, that's the shot you see of Doppelganger. And you don't see his legs, but he's clearly standing. So I don't know how, again, how that's happening. Uh, but, uh, but he is. And then they give the uh, spine over to Carnage here. And Carnage now is much taller than Dopp uh, Doppelganger. So I don't know if he's growing with each codex he's getting. He's looking a little bit different. Of course, this could be an artist's interpretation of him. Uh, but Or it could just be like, oh, we're adding size to the guy or whatever. But uh, yeah, so you have Doppelganger kind of kneeling, I think, at this point and handing up to him. Again, the art doesn't show much. So I'm like, how can he kneel? He doesn't really have any legs. Or is he still short? And if he's short, how come he was the same height as, you know, Shriek in the other panel? So, I, I, you know, I have a few questions <laughs> there. As someone who's, you know, been paying attention to, uh, mostly to the character's history. For all I know, the character has come back over the few the last few years that I've missed out on. Because I am still, I got to finish reading the Flash Thompson stuff and then the Carnage series. So there are some things I'm missing out on. So maybe Doppelganger, you guys can correct me if he got his legs back or, you know, alternative happened. Uh, let me know down below. Uh, but as far as I know, I'm just like, oh, I have height questions here between the panels. Um, and then uh, then here's where my theory is. Uh, you have Misty Knight, and she gets John, and they're like, all right, we're going to leave the town because everybody's dead. And then as they're leaving, John has the spirals in his eyes right there. Uh, so he still has the null spirals. And then uh, he looks at the town, and there was even, you know, even more so. Even though the symbol was already everywhere else, it was still made around the town, you know, through damage through the buildings. And they made a null spiral. So what I'm guessing is happening here is that John Jameson is uh, still under the influence. He was, you know, uh, you know, covered by the Carnage symbiote. And I'm thinking that the reason Carnage did that was so he could access 
to John later on. Uh, so I think John's going to be like a sleeper agent for Carnage in the upcoming story, which kind of makes sense that Carnage would do that because Carnage would want to torture John for all the years that John has been involved tracking him down or keeping him at Ravencroft. Um, it seems like a really, uh, it, you know, it seems like the way to go with the storyline for John and Carnage especially. So I think Carnage did that. He, he infected him. So now whenever he needs to rip the spine out, he can. But for now, he can at least maybe control or have an influence over John and the Man Wolf, uh, which makes him, you know, a powerful ally in a lot of ways to Carnage and the where he's going forward. So, you know, the, everyone, Eddie Brock and everyone might come and fight Carnage. And they'll have John Jameson on their side, and they're like, all right, turn in the Man-Wolf. And then when he does, maybe Man-Wolf is under the possession of Carnage or under the influence of Carnage. So that's what my theory is. I'm sure that's, you know, probably where they're going to go with it. Uh, but I could be wrong, too. I mean, maybe it's just nothing at the end there. But it seemed like a, a kind of a foreshadow for that. Uh, but the overall, the issue was fine. I mean, like I said, I had some issues with uh, like the maybe things that the editor should have noticed and I had some questions about some of the art and you know like uh, you know what doppelganger is he is he that tall same tall as Shriek or same height as Shriek uh, or is he like you know uh, just on his legs again or you know what's going on if he's just crawling around on the six arms uh, I don't know so I have I have questions there but you know you guys let me know if I miss something let me know down below for sure and we'll continue our conversation as always down there and if you won the free copy of this let me know what you think because it's only one once you use that code it's gone so whoever put that code in first got the comic book so i'd love to hear your thoughts on this book as well um so that's it i know there's another one shot coming out in like a couple months with andy so we'll talk about that when it comes out but next we're going to be diving into the war of the realm stuff and we'll do more versus stories as well i think the last story we did was silver sable so we'll probably do either nova or dark hawk coming up and then right around the time avengers endgame comes out we'll go ahead and do the the vault storyline where it's uh you know venom versus the avengers and then after that we'll get into the wolverine story and then we'll get back into more of the old venom miniseries comics wrap those up and then we'll dive into, uh, you know, the Flash Thompson stuff soon after. So a lot of stuff, Venom stuff coming up. I know a lot of you guys were, uh, one, one person in particular who was like, hey, why aren't you talking about Venom stuff lately? It's like, hey, man, I'm, I'm pacing them out the best I can. But I already told someone I would do all the Marvel movie reviews. So those are kind of taking precedence right now. And I figured you guys could probably wait just a little bit on some of these since they're older stories. Uh, but, you know, I will release them as soon as I can. And I'll, I'll still try to make two or three Venom episodes a week. But we're going to pump out a lot of other stuff for right now. And uh, and then once, you know, movie news starts coming out more for the sequel, we'll start diving in and we'll get back to like the four or five episodes a week of Venom vlog. But for now, I'm just kind of enjoying the break. Hopefully you're okay with that. If not, or if so, let me know down below if that's okay. Uh, but either way, I'm going to do it. I got to take a break for a little while and so I don't burn out on Venom stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're still going to pace ourselves nice and uh, we got other stuff coming up too, DC and everything so hopefully you guys are liking the shows I'm doing I, I thought I was gonna just minimize to like two shows and I, I can't do it there's just so much stuff out there I want to talk about so with my work schedule I'm doing the best I can to keep up so hopefully you guys are enjoying them and if so let me know in the comments of all those videos make sure you share them help us spread we're almost you know I'm trying to get to us to 2,000 subscribers so uh, any content you think that I should make that might help us get there let me know in the comments I'm always open for suggestions Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.